Ali Mademoiselle et ça ce deuxième channel ouais. And jodi à nous va parler de Haïti. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the current state of Haiti and why Haiti is probably the worst it's ever been right now. Quotation marks. And we're going to get into that, right? So, of course, thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you guys so much for pulling up to a vlog tober. I had to take me a little break because that was a lot of posting. Make sure you guys go check out all the videos that I posted for vlogtober 2022. We're definitely going to be doing it again for 2023. I really, really love doing it. Like, listen, I love me some Halloween, all right? So, si vous pas regarder vidéo, yo, à regarder vidéo, yo, kounia, okay? And make sure you guys subscribe. Abonné, okay? So, for this video, right, I didn't want to do it. I'm going to tell you this right now. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to talk about this topic. However, I realized that this is actually extremely important to talk about. There's a lot of unanswered questions. And us, as Haitian Americans, especially that are probably watching this video, have to be informed of what's going on in our country, right? There's a lot going on in Haiti. Haiti is the worst that we've seen it in our generation anyway. And there's nothing we can do about it. Like, I'm just going to tell you this right now. Like, there's, there's probably absolutely nothing we can do about it. There's a lot of things going on right now that none of us have been privy to or none of us know about because a lot of what's being reported is not true okay and also a lot of what's not being reported is what we should know but they don't want us to know there's a lot of powerful people that are behind a lot of the disgusting heinous things that we know are going on in Haiti right now so massive trigger warning if you are having a horrible day don't watch this if you're having a good day you don't want to ruin don't watch this. There's a lot that I'm gonna go over. Really do not want to ruin anyone's day. So come back another time. You click on another video. I have plenty of videos. I also have two other channels. Everything's gonna be linked down below. Also linked down below, you're gonna find all my references. There's going to be a lot of references from videos I made to videos other people made to links of articles talking about everything I'm talking about from current events to historical events. Everything is at play here be mindful everything that i'm talking about right now is either going to be off record or on record in a different way this is because a lot of the things that happen in haiti are literally not recorded if you want to find out what's going on in haiti you have to talk to legitimate haitian people people that talk to people that live in haiti or people that live in haiti themselves my information is coming from haitians that live in haiti lived in haiti and are haitian american okay i do not follow haitian journalists, Haitian news stations, or Haitian Instagram for legit news anymore. Except for Bertrude. That's about it, okay? Everybody else, I do not follow them in terms of taking them seriously because I realize a lot of times these people be putting out a whole bunch of bullshit. They see one thing they run with, okay? Okay, and that is the same with fucking journalists. And plus, we all know how journalists in Haiti have a really, really bad reputation in terms terms of not even a bad reputation they have a propensity for getting killed for telling the truth so i don't know if people just been paying them off if they just be taking pay to report fuck shit but a lot of the shit that we're seeing in the news about haiti not correct not even 50 percent you have to get your news from people that live directly in haiti if you hear something about haiti on the news on instagram whatever you have to triple check that shit okay so with that being said don't take everything i'm saying as a hundred percent go double check it all right i'm just giving you guys information giving you guys some food for thought and also giving you guys a different perspective of what is going on in Haiti and I feel like this is a video that I had to make mainly because our people are hurting right now and I feel like it's very very important to understand it and it's also very important that we avoid another US or UN or any type of other foreign occupation because any single time anyone has occupied Haiti it has done absolutely no good for Haiti if anything everything got a hundred times worse and it's very interesting because every single time Haiti gets to this point everyone's like oh occupation 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 it's like are you guys dumb like did we not forget what happened last time you know it, it's just like no like no we're going to just start from the beginning now shall we there is an immense amount of violence going on in Haiti right now and when I'm talking about violence we're not talking about the normal violence that we typically see on TV where you know everyone's just sitting here rioting looting and setting fires right there's a lot of 
of murder. There's a lot of the R word. There is stealing. There is a lot of things that are shut down. The only thing that is open in Haiti regularly right now are churches. Please hold on to that thought. We're going to get into that later. You cannot even send money to a lot of your loved ones. And those of you guys who actually keep up with your family members in Haiti would know this. You can't send money to your loved ones because a lot of these places are closed. And if they're open, your loved ones are being robbed for their money. There are routes where people cannot walk freely. So everyone is terrified and cooped up in their own homes. And you guys are probably thinking like, yo, what is everybody so afraid of? Kidnapping, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you guys who are millennials, if you are literally anywhere between the ages of probably like maybe 21 to 30, you would remember all of those damn kidnapping songs that all of the compa artists were putting out way back in like the early 2000, 2001. Okay, like y'all y'all remember those damn songs when kidnapping was like the thing to do in Haiti? Well, bitch, it's back. Lately, it's been back. And I remember when I heard my parents and other family members talking about, yeah, y'all kidnapping Munaiti. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Like, that's a thing again? Like, last time I heard about kidnapping was like in a Kaimi song. Rest in peace, Mika Ben. I was like, wait, what? Like, I was so confused. Cause I'm like, wait, we're doing this again? And mind you, that was a couple years ago when they kind of started doing that. But now it's rampant. Kidnappers have taken over Haiti. Now, this is absolutely nothing new. Now, in one of my unpopular opinions videos that I did recently, I talked about how I think that gangs are a necessary evil and that Haiti is literally nothing new in terms of what they're doing. Like all the violence, it's it's basically what they've always been doing. And I do think gangs are a necessary evil in certain cases when they're not sitting here doing fuck shit to their own people because they do restore order. In the case of Haiti, not having any damn president. And I don't understand where the fuck this election is. It's been how long since Jovenel died? And who get president? I don't understand. But like this whole looting, killing people senselessly, like this is not normal. Like when I'm telling y'all, like this is very strange. And then on top of that, these gangs and shit are not your average gangs that we've seen in Haiti. These kidnappings are not your average kidnappings that you've seen in Haiti. And the violence is also not your, your, your average violence. Now, let me explain. All of the violence, all of the riots, all of that crazy shit you always see that happens in Haiti, always no feel. Okay, it's always in the capital. It's always in the hot spots of Haiti. You ain't never gonna see that shit in Cabaret. You never gonna see that shit anywhere. Okay, anywhere in the West, anywhere in the East, anywhere in the North is always in the South of Haiti, y'all. It's always by the capital. It's always there. It's never been anywhere else. What it is is CNN, Fox, all of that, they make it seem like, oh my God, Haiti's upside down. Haiti's in disarray. No, 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 no. Haiti's fine. That's the capital, bitch. Okay, just like how you ever see shit on the news and you be like, oh my God, look, the niggers is acting up. But it's like, no, bitch. The niggers is fine. Bitch, I'm, I'm at home. I'm at home with my, my first row. We're acting just fine over here. But they'd be making it seem like it's all black people. It's the same thing that they do with everything else. And when it comes to Haiti and these riots, they would sit there like, oh my God, look at Haiti. All the people are protesting. No, the people in the north are fine. The people in the east are fine. The people in the west are fine. The people in the south are always doing what the people in the south do. And that's the thing. It wouldn't even be the people. It would be the kidnappers. And when you would see the kidnappers, the kidnappers were kidnappers. The people in the gangs and stuff, right? And they would be grown ass adults doing whatever it is. And these people would be like actual pillars of the community for a lot of the Haitian people. A lot of them weren't necessarily violent unless they had to do something, you know? I'm not a killer, but don't push me. But now these kidnappers, you're different. They're different. These kidnappers now, they're kids. These kidnappers now, they're literally like under the age of 18, but yeah, under the age of 16, they're ch children and they have some big boy toys y'all ak-47s machine gun kelly okay they got a lot of like they got machine guns all types of weapons all types of cars all types of strategy all types of voodoo all types of protection we're confused and on top of that they're not just in the capital anymore now they've moved on to terrorizing people all over haiti for absolutely no reason the gangs used to be there to protect the people literally from what back in the day used to be like government corruption like the tonton makut type shit now these gangs have kind of turned on the people they're killing innocent children on their way to school innocent people on their way to church robbing people on the way from the timashi or the supermarket this is bizarre they're not staying in port-au-prince kunya you had a cabaret kunya yo jis matisson which is kind of close to port-au-prince but you guys understand they're not 
centralized in the hot spots. They're mobilized. And on top of that, now they have strategized to have in little networks, bitch. It's like the Bloods and the Crips of Haiti. Now there's over about 200 gangs in Haiti. Where they do that at? How to, first of all, these are people that, let, for all intents and purposes, I'm not even trying to be disrespectful, couldn't even fucking figure out how to eat. Now we have kids that are fucking drug gang kidnapping lords. And the whole kidnapping thing should have been a sign that shit was gonna get real. Because these kidnapping things was serious. They would literally hit y'all with this Al-Qaeda type of videos, y'all. They was on Facebook, Instagram, all types of shit. Y'all felt like stream. We all know what happened to the diplomats, which, to be honest, let's be real. We all know that the diplomats was not doing what they needed to be doing, which I should have did a video on that but to be honest i ain't had time for you to be taking my video down but anyways we all know that the motherfuckers i'm not saying they deserved it but anyways they didn't die did they oh well anyways they'd be fine so the, the thing i'm trying to say is they were sitting here on video hold the motherfuckers for ransom making jokes doing this that and the third and the thing is way back in the day like in the early 2000s when the kidnappers was kidnapping people they was slaughtering niggas like they didn't give no fucks like they didn't care if you gave the money or not they was like all right uh thank you they was like um you know they would be like i want two hundred and fifty thousand dollars american or you know your brother dies thank you for the money he gonna die anyway send you his head in the mail type shit right now a lot of them don't even seem to be killing people when they kidnap them it's literally just a ransom thing and they're going after high profile people with these kidnappings they're not going after little fish they're going after big fish you know and it's very interesting and i hate to speak on it i don't really want to because this is something a lot of you have been asking me to talk about mika ben and his death which listen when celebrities die, when anyone dies, like, when it, listen, I'm not gonna capitalize off people's death, and I think we need to normalize, especially Munaisien, let people grieve, okay? But Mika Ben, one of his family members was actually kidnapped, and a lot of people think that, you know, I, I'm not sure how true this is, because I didn't look into it, they think that when he got the news, you know, that probably caused him to have a heart attack from the shock of it. You know, it takes a toll on you. Imagine, you know, you're, you're chilling, or you're about to perform, or something happens, you know, you have something important to do, and now you find out, like, yo, your family member's been kidnapped by a fucking Haitian kidnapper like them niggas is ruthless either they take the money and they kill you or they take the money and they leave you on the side of the road so somebody else can kill you or kidnap your ass again like there's a lot of there's crazy stories out there so these kidnappers lately they're still violent they're still killing people and things like that you know the gangs and stuff like that but usually a lot of times lately they're not as bad as like way back in the 2000s or whatever like they're they're not that bad a lot of them are just kidnapping taking the money and, and leaving you out on the side of the road which is very interesting and i'm like that's very weird and it's like the people that they're going after are people People like priests like one of my dad's friends got taken and he was a priest and I'm like okay one of my dad's friends also got taken he was like a politician the series of people that they're taking like they're not taking random people off the street and just hoping that they they get money back in the day they were taking people off the street and just hoping that they got money this is different shit so that's something to definitely keep in mind a lot of people are terrified in Haiti right now this is literally like a very very scary situation for a lot of Haitian people and to be honest I don't know what to do because it's to the point where you can't even send what to Haiti which is basically dune or like um, cargo you can't send cargo to Haiti a lot of Haitians we like to pack up a lot of let's say care packages we send so food clothes whatever to our family and loved ones in Haiti and usually they get them within a couple weeks to a month or so we can't even do that anymore because kidnappers and gang members are are seizing them when it comes to sending money like i said a lot of the money places are closed down or the kidnappers are robbing people on their way to or from these money places so again i have no idea how we're supposed to help so with that being said for those of you guys who are thinking oh let me donate to haitian charity i already covered why you should not did i not do a video on that i should do a video on that do not donate to haitian charities because you'll fall all this money that was given to haitian charities where the fuck are the haitian houses where the fuck is the haitian pavement nowhere don't donate to haitian charities because they ain't shit at this point like it's getting to a point where like we need some different solutions which i have a couple um i'm gonna save them for the end but i know with all of this that i just told you you guys are just like what the fuck <laughs> like yes it, it's a lot and i know there's still a lot of unanswered questions and of course i know a lot of you guys are probably like damn this is the worst this is the worst haiti's ever been how could it get like this we need a military intervention we need united states we need the un we need whatever i don't understand why every single time something like this happens in haiti which continuously kind of happens in Haiti it just gets worse and good and worse and less bad and why is 
is it that y'all always say that as if y'all forgot what happened the first, second, and last time this happened? Like, y'all need to understand, occupations in any country never end well. But occupations in Haiti have absolutely never, ever, ever had a good track record. Okay, so let's just start with one. Yeah, that's all we're gonna have time for. Let's talk about the 19-year occupation that the U.S. had, okay? We had President Woodrow Wilson that had the nerve gall audacity to bring U.S. Marines to Haiti. Now, you guys are probably like, why the fuck did that even happen, okay? Now, there's a lot that went into that, but the U.S. had a lot of different interests in Haiti as well as the Dominican Republic. They basically wanted to annex the island as a whole, bring it together, annex it for the United States, and most importantly, build a naval base there. Mm-hmm. So, what better way to do that than to, you know, go do a little occupation while Haiti was a little bit unsteady, but let's be real. Haiti was always fucking unsteady. Steady. But this is 1915, 1938-ish, okay? So this is a 19-year span. And the years leading up to 1915, oh my god. The drama that was going on in Haiti belongs on Netflix. I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you. Essentially, there was at least, I believe, don't quote me on it, 11 presidents that were either assassinated, exiled, or just left office. It, it was a lot of shit going on, like leading up to 1915. Basically, everybody's looking at Haiti like, oh my god, they need order. Oh my god, what's going on? So when a lot of people sit there and they just be like, oh, Haiti's the worst it's ever been. It's like, I hate to be an asshole. I love my country. I love my people. But looking into Haiti's history has made me realize it's never been good. So when people say that, I just be like, when was it ever good? When was it ever good? And then they be like, oh, well, if Haiti had a dictator, are y'all really serious right now? Like, are we really going to play the whole card of if Haiti was... That's a slave mentality. You need to go check yourself out. And on top of that, do we not remember that a lot of Haiti's presidents were fucking dictators up until like literally maybe the last probably decade? Like literally most of them qualify as dictators. Most of them were in office for more than five years and not by the people's choice, not reelected, not elected at all, stuffed ballots, <coughs> America putting people in power. <coughs> Do your research guys. These are literally quick Google searches. Quick Google searches. For the people that are born in Haiti, the people that went to school in Haiti, you guys know this. You should know this, okay? None of these motherfuckers was actual presidents. Most of these motherfuckers was dictators. So y'all sitting there like, oh, Haiti would be better if they had dictator presidents. And Haiti was that not that much better when they had dictator presidents. I have no idea what the fuck you guys are talking about. Like, I really thought that when I started doing the research for, like, older presidents, I would find, like, you know, great shit. And I'm like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> like, this is a bad mem. You got Henry Christoph committing suicide. You got Alex on pictures just giving out land like it's fucking Monopoly. But nobody could read. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this shit, come on now. Niggas separating the land from North and South, and now the land is still the same. Like, y'all gotta be fucking kidding me right now. So, President Andrew Jackson was the one who actually really wanted to annex Haiti, but he failed doing that. But you had President Woodrow Wilson who actually went forward with the whole U.S. occupation situation when things in Haiti started to become a fucking mess. Now, the reason they chose to do it this way was, one, because it was easy because Haiti was upside down. Literally similar to what we're seeing today. Protests, violence, no food, no money, Money, no water, woy, lo, 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 lo. they were like, yo, they need help. We should step in. Understand, America never helps unless they have interest at hand. It was to the point where literally the US sent Marines to go steal. What is this cat doing? Sage. Ugh. U.S. literally sent Marines to go steal $500,000 out of Haiti's reserve for safekeeping just in case. Like, apparently that's how bad it was in Haiti at the time. Like, it was like in a state of political unrest just like we're seeing today. And this was following the assassination of President Jean Villebron Guillaume, all right? That assassination was a lot, okay? That sent the country into a world fucking win. And this was the perfect opportunity for America to slither in after their fucking failed attempts of trying to get Haiti to cooperate with them, okay? So you had Andrew Jackson that was trying to annex. Clearly that didn't work because Haiti was like, bitch, where? You had William Taft that actually gave Haiti a large loan in order to pay off their debt. Haiti took that shit and said, okay, thank you. Bye, bitch. And now you have Woodrow Wilson that's just like, okay, well, um, since you guys need help, we'll be glad. 
to offer that help, okay? I believe Haiti asked for the help, kind of. I'm not sure how that went, but long story short, U.S. occupation happens, and it starts in 1915, and child, the ghetto, oh my god, the ghetto. So, of course, the U.S. Marines are the head of this, okay? This is how the whole occupation worked from what I understand. It was U.S. as well as Haitian soldiers under the rule and command of U.S. Marines, and as you guys can imagine, this shit did not work well because Haitians do not know how to fucking listen, and Haitians are known for coups. Yeah, Haitians like things their way. Shockingly, there was um, compliance on the Haitian soldiers, and from what I know, I didn't even look too much into that part. I, I should have. I really should have. But I'm sure everybody's pockets were being lined well enough, so yeah. But of course, there was lots of allegations of SA, lots of allegations of murder, and lots of other crazy things and mistreatments of the soldiers. And we can't forget that the reason that a lot of people think that Haitian voodoo is malevolent is because of these American soldiers that came to Haiti and saw voodoo ceremonies and saw people sacrificing humans thinking oh my god these Haitians are doing demon shit and of course we can't forget that the reason a lot of people think that Haitians are demons is because a lot of these US soldiers saw fake voodoo experiences yes I say fake voodoo experiences because people especially in Haiti are not dumb enough to just do voodoo like legit voodoo ceremonies in front of fucking white people especially Americans okay if anything they was probably just put on our show for them but basically the reason a lot of people like know about zombies and stuff is because that comes from Haiti okay that comes from US soldiers that occupied in Haiti all right for the most part a lot of that whole situation comes from the fact that a lot of them were seeing that Haitians were practicing voodoo dancing singing in weird ways and strange ways and sacrificing animals they thought they were probably sacrificing animals too doing things that weren't Christian like and they brought that shit back to America and now they make it movies and they're like yup that's them nigger Haitians you know they use that nigger voodoo for, for independence not using that nigger voodoo on us too and oh I'm crazy now you know fucking American soldiers not much good really came from that except for what people call stability but it's interesting because the people did not like this shit the people were hurting like I said there was a lot of SA okay there was a lot of interesting things going on behind the scenes that of course was not reported into fucking decades later we're now finding out about about these shitty ass soldiers. Even later on, fast forward, we hear about these UN soldiers sitting here SAing a lot of little children and literally leaving a lot of Haitian women to have children for them and never coming back for these said children. So it's like you guys keep saying occupation, occupation. Okay, it'll be stable in the fucking news, but what about the people? What about the people that have to live through this? Y'all don't fucking live there. So y'all want them to be ruled by military. Y'all were fucking crying that y'all couldn't even fucking go outside because of COVID. But you think it's okay to say say that military should go rule in somebody's country give me a fucking break y'all need to stop that shit it's not okay just just think and think put yourself in these people's shoes not all of them are out here causing destruction not all of them are doing fucked up shit sadly a good chunk of them are but not all of them have to suffer for it shortly after this whole occupation started by 1917 the u.s tried to get haiti to change its um constitution its original constitution that basically was for in 1804 when the revolution had ended and Haiti was established as IET, as Haiti, right? Um, child, the ghetto, okay? So, apparently the Haitian legislature was still intact, which is shocking to me. I'm surprised they didn't dissolve it yet. And um, this new constitution that they proposed basically allowed for foreign land ownership. Now, let me just say, foreign land ownership in Haiti has been revoked since, like, literally the dawn of Haiti's inception. Like, mainly because they do not want foreign to control Haiti and I don't think that's a bad idea because let's be real there's a lot of African countries that let other people own land and now you have a lot of people going in there doing the potequa and now way more foreigners that own parts of their countries than the people that live there because the people that live there can barely afford to eat so I genuinely do understand why they have this whole law against foreign land ownership in retrospect it does fuck us over you know us that are born in America to Haitian parents right like I am full 100% Haitian both of my parents are Haitian I grew up in a Haitian neighborhood went to Haitian church do Haitian I, I'm Haitian because both of my parents are Haitian and it's funny because regardless if we're talking about Haitian culture or anything else there's always gonna be that one ass well you're not Haitian because you weren't born in Haiti bitch my nationality is not Haitian my nationality is American and my ethnicity is Haitian however my race is black understand the difference between race ethnicity and nationality because if you don't you ain't going nowhere and if you type that ignorant shit i will probably curse you the fuck out but probably one of my subscribers gonna
don't curse you the fuck out for me. The point I'm trying to get at is I am Haitian. And where someone's born is their nationality, where their parents' ethnic background and family is from is their ethnicity, and their racial background is their racial background. I think we all know, you know, white, black, Asian, whatever. So it's like, I feel like it sucks because damn, I can't own hand, I can't personally like own land in Haiti because like I wasn't born there. Like that's some fuck shit. I don't really like that, but like I understand it, you know, it is what it is. I wouldn't sit there and go try to change that at all, you know, but they know what the fuck they were doing. They wanted to change that law so they could be like, oh, okay, yeah, let's um, sneak in that naval base that we wanted to do. So the Haitian legislature said, fuck off. Um, no. Yo di kono get momonu nu pap fell. Okay, so they denied this new constitution. But you already know, the U.S. had that covered. Funny enough, I found all of this information on a U.S.gov website. So, pa di mette Powell su Etats Unis. I was born here. I currently live here. I'm pap fell Powell su moon. I am not making this shit up. This is on the U.S.gov site. You guys can go read it. It's linked down below, okay? So, America had put in a president, guys. They infiltrated the fucking ballot. They had manipulated an election, and they had this president. I can't. I, I can't even say my nigga name, okay? Quasi dumb. Formu lui ba la oui. Dart. Mes amis. Darty Gunav. Oh my God, ça? Who the fuck, if your last name is Darty Gunav, I'm so sorry, but where, where they, did they even make, that nigga probably American and they just gave him that last name and just called him Asian. Cause nigga, what, what the fuck is a Darty Gunav? Now I'm sure people are gonna curse me out. They're like, that's a common last name. That's my last name. I don't care. I never heard of it. I, I never heard of it. But anyways, they go on president Darty Gunav, you made the no office. Okay, they, they, they put this man in office and what they get Darty Gunav to do? Mm, dissolve the legislature. <laughs> the US gets Mr. Darty whatever to dissolve of the legislature who did not come back together until 1929 and the u.s occupation ended in 1935 oh my bad i've been saying 1935 this whole time oh my god 1934 first of all this is the first confirmation of the u.s actually legitimately fucking around with our elections and admitting to it this is literally on a usa.gov fucking website i was like i knew it like i've heard this is speculation bad time you know but wow okay like they, they knew what the fuck they were doing okay so of course fast forward the haitians you know they start riding you know they do what they do best at this point they could just literally hire haitians as crisis actors and like fake protesters like they would make a really really good job at it like because i feel like haitians have like a phd in protesting but anyways we do what the fuck we do best we're protesting but like listen we don't want these fucking yankees here no more <laughs> get these white folks I'm sorry, that was rude. We don't want these American soldiers here anymore. Get them the fuck out. At this point, everybody was fed up, okay? And a lot of people may say, oh, well, they just don't like stability. They don't like laws. They don't like... No, that's not what it is. These soldiers was doing a lot of fuck shit. You just have to really dig really deep to find exactly what they were doing. And I encourage you to ask people that were living in Haiti, what were these people doing in the street? And I'm not talking about the privileged Haitians that was living in la ville and shit. I'm talking about the ones that was living in, like, a you on it okay the people that was living like in the outskirts the people that didn't have much money ask them because those are the people that are gonna get taken advantage of because nobody speaks for them the police station is further out from them okay speak to them what did the soldiers do to or for them because i guarantee you it's probably not gonna be a good story so before the u.s left allegedly they did properly train haiti's military as well as other staff and legislature or whatever how to properly handle haiti its finances etc i'm back on it keep training you I have no idea clearly you thought boy okay they was they was they was drinking on the job they didn't retain shit because Haiti went right back to its old ways and mind you that's just one example of literally what happened when Haiti had an occupation right now I told that story in particular because it's very very similar to what's going on now president dies Haiti goes upside down occupation right right now we're in the Haiti goes upside down and we're headed towards an occupation and I really hope it doesn't happen because occupations are a really really bad thing I could probably do a whole video on why occupations just shouldn't happen for any country at all so let's do a little bit of question and answers before we get into some solutions right why exactly are Haitians mad and protesting let's be a hundred percent right you'll probably never know why they're protesting today the reason they're protesting today is probably not the reason they were protesting yesterday there's so many different issues 
hitting you right now. But from what I understand, the grand scheme of things is they do not want another occupation. Also, another thing is the gangs. The gangs are rampant, like I said. They're all over and they cannot take it anymore. And they want some sort of stability. They want the government to do something because they're doing absolutely nothing, AKA Ariel Henry, okay? Either they want him to do something or they want him to get the fuck out. That leads into my next question, which I know a lot of guys are asking, why do they not like Ariel Henry? Now, thing is with Ariel Henry, not only is he just not come off as a genuine person for a lot of people, but he's also been thought to have killed Jovenel, right? Now, this is the thing. A lot of you are probably like, well, nobody seemed to like the guy anyway. To be honest, you're right. But the thing is, at least Haiti had some sort of peace when he was alive. And it's like, if you won't kill that man, you could at least give us some food, some water, some peace. Ever since he died, you here and you not doing shit. And that's how a lot of people see it, right? He's not doing anything. Like, Ariel has not done anything. And most importantly, he promised an election and the election has not happened. It's been over a year and some change since Jovenel died. Not one election has been had. We haven't heard about candidates, like legitimate ones. Like it, it's it's giving scam. It's giving liar. It's giving at least protect us, sir. Why are the Haitians waving Russian flag? This is a big one. Uh, I know a lot of people were texting me like, do you know why they're waving Russian flags? At first I was like, uh, I had to really take a guess and I still couldn't figure it out. But shout out to Bitrude because I watched this one on Instagram. From what I understand, they're raving Russian flags because because this is a direct protest against US occupation. We all know the US is backing Poland and this whole Ukraine versus Russia war. So their whole idea is we're gonna throw out that Russian flag. Now, I personally don't think this means they stand with Russia because that would be kind of stupid because there's lots of Polish people that live in Haiti and Polish people are very, very close to Ukrainian people. And I would hope that's not what it is because I'm, I'm sure that's not what it is. It's, it's more of a symbol like anti high US occupation. That's basically what it is. Now, it's funny because my best friend Sunzi, I said some shit and I was crying. She was like, so you're telling me they have money to go get a fucking Russian flag, but no money for food or gas or resources? What the fuck? I was like, maybe Amazon deliver. I don't know. She's like, well, they need to have them deliver them food. I was like, yo, to be honest, where do they get these flags from? That, I don't know. Maybe somebody sent it to them in a boat before shit got bad. I don't know. But long story short, the Russian flags basically mean fuck USA occupations. Since Haiti is going through all of this shit, why no occupation? I pretty much explained why I'm against it. Um, I'm very sure that since Haiti wants to be out here turning upside down and these kidnappers want to do whatever fuck they're doing, I kid you not, they'll rally together to get the fucking hug. <laughs> to get US out of there is not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. I, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be pretty, okay? That's one thing. If there's one thing I know, Haitians know how to come together for one common enemy and right Right now, the United States is Haiti's enemy. No matter how much aid that they think they get from them or whatever case may be, they'll take the aid, they'll take the help, but they're like, yeah, no, nah, we don't fuck with y'all. Which is very ironic. They need to just figure shit out on their own. Also understand that it goes deeper than just what I said, right? You guys should check out my video on Haitian adoption and things like that. Foreigners in Haiti have not done good to Haitians, okay? First of all, let's talk about how the earthquake money that was raised for Haiti by foreigners and charities didn't go to Haitians, right? You talk about the US UN peacekeepers, these soldiers were literally our worrying children, our wording women, and then leaving those women with babies, creating broken homes. We have other US soldiers doing the same thing, as well as going back to America to literally talk about their experiences and capital off of voodoo experiences that were legitimately untrue. And then they're sitting here demonizing the fuck out of us. And then you have the whole rice crisis. Oh my God, like there's a lot of shit. Like the list just keeps going. This is literally just like surface level shit that I'm talking about right now. It does Haiti no good. And this is, yo, look into the African countries. Look into the African countries. Look into Ukraine and their occupations. Look into every country that has had occupations. They've had the same issues that Haiti has had with occupations. It doesn't do good for the people. It may do good for us because we're like, oh, well, peace of mind. But it doesn't do good for them and we don't fucking live there. If they don't want it, I don't think it's good for us to sit there and rally for it. It causes mass destruction. And I'm very sure it's gonna be destruction for them. So if you love your brother, Brothers and sisters that are in the military, I kid you not. So here are the theories as to why Haiti has gotten so bad over the years since Jovenel has 
has passed away. Of course, the assassination itself, right? A lot of people believe that the people who are uprising, okay, the people who are essentially doing all of this goofy shit are supporters of Jodnell and they're just genuinely upset. This is kind of like rival killings and things like that, but I feel like that's very, very like, oh, not rival. This is like redemption killing or kind of like avenges death type killings, right? To be honest, I feel like that's a little far-fetched and it's it's been a while. I feel like, okay, maybe if it was a couple months after, but it's like, my God, like, are we gonna be done yet? Like, qui up fini, you know? So that's a little far-fetched, but a lot of people do feel that way. Just the overall instability of it all. Let's be real. No one wants to live in instability. No one wants to not know where their next meal is or not know if they're not gonna wake up tomorrow morning because, oh my God, there's kidnappers outside my door. I can't go to school. I can't go to church. I can't go to the corner store or the tea machine. You know, so it's, it's, it's very, it's a lot going on for a lot of people. A lot of people are traumatized. A lot of people are going through a lot and it's causing people to lose their minds shit we lost our minds from covid because we couldn't fucking go outside so imagine how it is for them people can just be fed up um haiti has been the same since 1804 since before 1804 let's be real people get real real tired and generational trauma is a legitimate thing a lot of people seem to think that everybody's just fucking lost their mind now in haiti and they're just not standing for a lot of this bullshit anymore and now it is time to rise up okay everybody's just rising up and they're fed up they're done and everybody wants what they think is theirs so rob the houses kill the people do whatever it is that you need to do to come up because at the end of the day you ain't got nothing to lose because you never had anything in the first place it's it's very sad concept but it's true even when we're thinking about gangs in america where people just do bullshit to do bullshit a lot of them have nothing to lose so that's why they're just doing bullshit they have no morals they have no values in life so they just do what the fuck they do because who's gonna hold them accountable and that's that's a lot of what's going on through the minds of a lot of these kids and these gangs right now and of course they're young and they're impressionable so it's like they're young so they probably think they're gonna live forever they don't understand how precious life is right now and that brings us to the next couple of theories right now this is sinister but is the widely believed theories right like i stated a lot of these kidnappers are children now a lot of them are not grown so one theory is that the older kidnappers have retired and they recruited children to do their bidding or that the elite of haiti have a stake in this they are commissioning children to do kidnappings and making a large large cut off of the ransom that the kidnappers are taking and they're making the list and they're checking it twice and they're sending these kids out you heard what i said it sounds sinister but that's what a lot of people think is happening and it's the most plausible theory a lot of people think that literally haiti's top one percent have been commissioning all of these kidnappings and when you really think about it it makes sense because a lot of the people that have been kidnapped are like high profile but not high profile like it's like celebrities cousins or like the cousin of a priest or a priest but it's like these people are getting kidnapped like i remember there was a priest that got kidnapped while he was doing a fucking service in church it was like are we dead ass right now like literally he was live on facebook doing a service in church and he got kidnapped like this is getting out of hand you know so it's like but, but what and then the other people that are getting kidnapped like they're getting kidnapped in their home or like while they're running errands it's like how the fuck would people know that this person be here unless you know them or you know people who know them you know like it, it, it's just weird and let's be real there's no real way to make money in haiti there's no like legit jobs you know it's not like a real busting economy so what better way to make money than to kidnap people and ask for ransom it's the perfect plan to be honest kids are impressionable they'll do whatever it is that you tell them to do especially if you say i'll throw you a couple hundred i'll throw you a couple thou that is more money than they'll ever see in their entire life and a lot of these kids were already not doing anything in the first place if you see these kids like they can't even hold a fucking gun properly like the gun is bigger than them so it's just like uh, what the fuck is going on and y'all it, it gives me a headache like i'm so tired i can't even talk about this anywhere like but i have to finish the rest of this video like it's getting me so worked up because i feel bad for these kids i truly do it's not necessarily their fault they're fucking children but at the same time these children are setting up gangs in their local communities communities that raise them okay like that's the crazy part about this like a lot of the gangs are mobilizing but a lot of the gangs are actually establishing new gangs and finding new gang leaders that are children that were 
like brought up in these neighborhoods so it's even worse like imagine one day you know someone next day they try to kidnap your ass and that was your best friend you grew up with playing play-doh and shit with shooting ball with and now they a kidnapper like yo it's it, that's like the type of shit that we're talking about here right the next theory would be that everyone is in cahoots government the top one percent the churches the schools everybody and they are paying these children to essentially kidnap kill and wreak havoc on the country and everyone's getting a cut and the reason they're doing this is to have u.s occupation so they could get a bigger cut so the u.s can carry out whatever imperialist plan they have for this season to be honest this makes sense and the only reason i think this makes sense now because at first i was like i think that's a lot um and that's mad extra it's so fucking possible though like now that we know how corrupt haiti is and how everything flies under the radar like niggas don't even fucking pay taxes for their land for real so it was just like this makes sense recently one of my my friends told me that his dad who lives in Haiti told him that a church was legit busted for smuggling drugs you heard me right a church was busted okay a church in Haiti was busted for smuggling drugs into the country and what did I say churches are the only thing open in Haiti right now everything is practically closed and that was something that had went viral a couple weeks ago there was a man that was going off he was like oh why the fuck all the schools closed and everything else is closed but the church is open y'all some thieves da -da 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 -da. and I'm like yo he's on to something this is interesting why the fuck are the churches open yes that's hope that's this that's that but like Mm, something don't seem right here this is Haiti we're talking about no so when I heard that and then I started thinking about the orphanages and adoptions please watch my video on Haitian adoption if you haven't but long story short there's barely any orphans in Haiti all of these kids that you ever see for Haitian adoption have parents they've been kidnapped okay this is something that I've talked about already in a video you can look it up yourself a lot of Haitian children are literally ripped away from their parents or give the orphanages schools or whatever the case permission to take care of them however however they do not give them permission to be adopted to wherever the fuck these kids are adopted to so now these kids are taken into foreign places sometimes into sex trafficking sometimes into nepote qua and they don't know what the hell is going on so be very very careful because a lot of people they'll sit here and they'll comment on my videos like oh well you talk about haiti so much why did you go and adopt the fucking haitian kid bitch i'm not even old enough to adopt the haitian kid because people have been doing so many malevolent things with these children literally selling them into sex trafficking and abusing them and doing whatever the fuck they think is right but clearly is wrong with these kids now they've raised the bar for Haitian adoption you have to be like over the age of 30 you have to be married if you're single you have to match a whole nother set of rules I don't even think you could do it if you're single like I really don't think that's on the bar but if you are I think it's like a whole separate set of rules you have to be married for a certain set of time if you're not a citizen you have to have another set of rules like it's very very difficult to adopt a child from Haiti okay and it is not a walk in a park all right mainly because of the crazy shit that people do with foreign kids but Haitian kids 10 times worse okay so again let's let's walk it back to the whole oh well why not you know have the military come and do whatever because all of this ties into it from occupation to the churches to the schools to the elite to all it like it all ties in you guys may not think it does but it does okay even when we're talking about the u.s occupation these dumbasses left a lot of their weapons behind okay and these gangs and a lot of these other people sat here and they picked these weapons up okay they pick these weapons up and they use them on each other right you know so there's a lot of things that people are not taking into consideration so that's just a couple of theories that have been bounced around but for the most part a lot of people don't understand where the fuck these kidnappers are coming from better yet kid kidnappers because it's like what the hell um, i think the most plausible theory is that clearly the older ones got older and they're like yeah we're not doing this shit anymore we too old for this shit and they got kids to do it or that everybody's in cahoots like you know from the elites to the churches and whatever because like why are churches smuggling guns I I think God said thou shalt not shoot. It's all business on. But so here's the mademoiselle solutions okay of course no occupation i don't give a fuck i feel like haiti needs to go through this season for the unteamed time because they need to realize that they need to stop fucking accepting handouts okay they need to stop accepting help from people because it's always gonna blow back in their face and they're always gonna owe somebody like they always owe somebody okay you know how like you have bad credit but then you have worse credit because you keep taking out credit that's basically what haiti keeps doing y'all need to figure this shit out yourselves if anything a lot of diaspora to help you 
without us being so damn afraid to help y'all ass. We can't help y'all because we afraid to help y'all. Y'all are scary. I, I feel like we're probably the only thing they haven't tried. Literally. The diaspora is the only thing that has not tried to help Haiti, okay? There's Haitian Americans, Haitian Canadians, Haitian French people, Haitian Australians, Haitians all over the world that would love to help Haiti but we can't because we are terrified and we don't want to lose our heads in the process. And of course, we can't own land. We can't have dual citizenship from what I understand either. So it's just like, how the fuck are we supposed to help you guys if you won't let us help you guys, you know? So I think that's the only option that hasn't been tried. And it's like, well, at that point, save yourself. Like, Haitians need to start fighting back. And let me just give a very, very big honorable mention to the Haitians that are fighting back. A lot of the Haitians are retaliating against the gangs. And I think that is, Mag Magnificent. Shout out to those of you guys who are fighting back. Shout out to those of you guys who are actually doing the damn thing. Because I feel like uh, the Haitians have lost their desaline spirit. Now, listen, I understand, yes, these gangs are powerful. A lot of them are honestly protected by voodoo, which, again, that's also very crazy because how the fuck, they're kids. But anyways, a lot of them are educated, right? They're educated and they, they like, spiritually anyway. So, I get it could be scary, but, like, just think about what our ancestors had to go through to get the country where it was to a point where it was free and the fact that everybody's just shitting on it right now and y'all are sitting here killing each other doing all of this goofy shit we need to get our spirit back y'all need to start fighting back because laying down and dying is not a fucking option letting this fucking country go down to a bunch of kidnappers is not how i want to see y'all go out y'all need to pick up some machetes pick up some of these machine guns after you kill some of these motherfuckers and start shooting back because this don't make no damn sense find the source and cut it off i think what's most important is finding out who's funding these gangs who started these gangs where they at and literally cut it off i don't know where the mumbo's at where the ogon's at where the boko's at but i think all y'all need to come together and figure out who's doing what i don't understand i feel like haitians we use voodoo for the most stupid shit okay we want to use it for a bullet we want to use it to kill the lady selling pate next door but we're not going to use it to help ourselves can we can we get together i don't understand i see you can we please establish a political structure that we like why does haiti have like a thousand political parties that's a problem we need to establish one that makes sense okay we have so many like oh my god i can't even keep track all i remember is lava last right now but there's so many different haitian political parties like literally the haitian senate or haitian house of whatever has like each person has their own political party like literally party of one party of two why we need to find a political party and stick to it and piggybacking off of that we need to find a president that everyone can get behind and everyone could support who can actually do some shit and deal with this fucking mess because at this point i'm tired i'm tired of the fake news i'm tired of the fucking drama i'm tired of all the mess okay with that being said i'm going to be doing another video talking about my family and what they've been going through and all of that because there's a lot um i couldn't fit it into this video but it's just it's very crazy because there's a lot more that i kind of like didn't put into this video but like it, it, it yeah yeah. there's a lot of things going on again that people are not talking about that people are going through and i feel like it does need to be talked about for those of you guys that might be able to get into haiti or have to go to haiti for whatever reason i think that's information that you guys need to know as well so thank you guys so much for listening to this video i know it was definitely way longer than any video that i do on this channel but i feel like all this information was definitely vital everything that i talked about will be linked down below thank you guys so very much i love you guys so very much i love you love you love you love you love you love you had to say it again Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that, get your merchandise, and subscribe to my other channels. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Bye!